Chapter 1. Background and Youth Hayes had little in common with George W. Bush, his 21st century successor. Not only was his father not a public figure, let alone a president, but his father, Rutherford Hayes Jr., died before the birth of his son. A New Englander, born in West Brattleboro, Vermont, he descended from a long line of Presbyterians who had come from Scotland in 1625 to settle in Connecticut. He had a common school education, had clerked in a store in Wilmington, Vermont, and then went into partnership with his brother-in-law, Joseph Noyes, in a store in Dummerston. Leaving for Ohio in 1817 with $8,000, he settled in the town of Delaware in that state to farm, trade, and invest in a distillery, Lamb and Hayes, a strange investment for the father of a future president who kept liquor out of the White House. An active Presbyterian, he was a strong supporter of education, both religious and secular. He died in July 1822 of a fever. Hayes's mother, Sophia Burchard, was also a descendant of an old New England family, whose paternal ancestor had arrived in America from England in 1634. Her father, Roger Burchard, was born in Connecticut and was a retail merchant in Wilmington, Vermont, who died at 45 years of age. At her husband's death in the summer of 1822, she inherited some land near Delaware, as well as an unfinished brick house in town. Rutherford Burchard, named after both parents, had been born on October 4, 1822, and moved into the new house the following year. It was a two-story brick dwelling on the northeast corner of William and Winter Streets, with a kitchen in an adjoining old one-story frame building fronting on Winter Street, and was not finished until 1828. At first, short on resources, the family had little furniture for its new home. A new bureau and stand, plain wood-bottomed chairs, a gilt frame looking glass, a good carpet, and cheap curtains for the parlor. The family consisted of the mother, the boy, Fanny, an older sister, and a brother, who drowned in 1825 while skating. Hayes's mother's cousin, Arsena Smith, lived with the family, as did her brother, Sardis Burchard, a lifelong bachelor. This uncle, a businessman and banker, became his guardian and virtual father figure. It was he who took charge of his nephew's education, provided funds, and in frequent letters gave him valuable advice after he moved to Lower Sandusky in 1827. Mrs. Hayes's income was derived from the rent of a farm some ten miles north of town, and Rudd, as he was called, and his sister Fanny, whom he adored, and with whom he played and later steadily corresponded, loved to visit it. The tenants gave them colored eggs filled with sugar at Easter, pet birds, rabbits, and turtles' eggs, while the children busied themselves with sugar-making, cider-making, and the gathering of hickory and walnuts. Rudd was a sickly child, whose survival was at first doubtful. It was Fanny who was his protector and nurse, leading him about the garden and on short visits to neighbors. He was able to reciprocate when she in turn fell ill, giving her little rides upon a sled during her recovery. Together they boarded with Arsena and her new husband, Thomas Wasson, when their mother went to nurse their sick uncle, and it was Wasson who sent them to the local district school in Delaware, run by a fierce Yankee schoolmaster who was notorious for his floggings. In spite of their pleadings to be taken out, Wasson refused. When his mother returned, Rudd, in 1834, took his first trip, a journey to his relatives in Vermont and Massachusetts, which he thoroughly enjoyed. The next year, he visited his uncle in Lower Sandusky, thus starting a lifelong habit of enthusiastic traveling. In 1836, Rudd was sent to a new school, the Norwalk Seminary in Ohio. The seminary, a Methodist school, run by the Reverend Jonathan E. Chaplin, was more to Hayes's liking than the previous institution, although he missed his sister very much. He was not phased by his studies. On Composition Day, he wrote an essay about liberty, and on Speaking Day, delivered a eulogy on Lord Chatham. Both well done. In the next year, he was transferred to Isaac Webb's school in Middletown, Connecticut, where, with his friend William Lane, he studied Latin and Greek. Although at first it was hard to keep up with the class, he quickly succeeded. He was very pleased with this school, as well as its director. Getting up at 6.30, he breakfasted, said prayers, and started his classes at 9. Dinner was at 12. On Saturday afternoons, he took long hikes, and he also began a study of French. That he was successful was clearly recognized by Webb, 
who wrote to Sardis Burchard, Rutherford has applied himself industriously to his studies and has maintained a constant and correct deportment. I think he will avail himself of the advantage of an education and fully meet the just anticipations of his friends. He is well informed, has good sense, and is respected and esteemed by his companions. He is strictly economical and regular in his habits and has established a very favorable character among us. Unquote.